Welcome back to the program. Now from friends and senators to newly elected governors. What can the uh, residents of Makweni and Nairobi expect with the two gentlemen who are now live in our studios this evening for the first time on national TV? I keep repeating that because it's true. Karibu sana, gentlemen. Asante. We've got Sakatha, Sakaja Johnson, Arthur, Governor-elect Nairobi, and uh, Mutula Kilonzo Jr., Governor-elect Makweni. And the first question I want to ask is straight off the back. There are people who've been looking for elective seats for 25 years. Mm -hmm. Both of you, Senate, first attempt, you get it. <laughs> Go, uh, Council of Governors, first attempt, you get it as well. <laughs> what is the secret? Mutula, let me start with you. I, I, I don't think there's a, there's a secret to it, um, only that I think we resonate with the people who elect us. Um, the, vo the confidence that the people who elected me in 2013 has not changed from 2013 to 2022. And therefore, it, it only means that in terms of the work that I've been doing, it has been consistent. And therefore, they, they can see the leadership. The vote of confidence that I've received in Makwani since 2013 mm. is, uh, is, is, a, is a record. Mm. Uh, in fact, I beat my competitors in every single place that I was voting in Makweni. So, mine was not an election, it was just a vote of confidence by the people of Makweni. <laughs> youth factor, but we can talk about that later. Yeah. Sakaja, for you, what was the secret? I mean, first of all, I'm really honored and grateful uh, to the people of Nairobi uh, for choosing me and giving me the mandate to be their governor. Um, you know all the drama that was there, despite all of that, um, the resolve was strong. And especially seeing the entirety of the results in Nairobi, um, my party didn't perform very well. If you look at the MCs, the, the MPs, um, Senator, Women Rep, but I got votes across board mm. from Azimio, of course from Kenya Kwanza, and I'm very grateful. Um, I don't know what secret could be, I've just always stayed true to who I am. Um, I've kept it real. And I think that is what connected uh, with the people. Um, and, and for me, I, I believe in, in, in God's word that leadership comes from God, Romans 13, that uh, all authority, there's a, a reason and a purpose for it. And so I'm just grateful, and whatever it is, I hope it keeps happening, <laughs> that the first shot at Senate worked, at Governor worked. And for me, I take it as a huge mandate. In fact, if you look at the results, there are a lot of lessons to learn from it. I want to understand why they made that decision. And now to tell the people of Nairobi, I will not let you down. I will I not know, let. We're going to talk down. about that shortly. But you mentioned the drama, so you've waded into that. Yeah. Is it over now? I, I don't think Any it ever court will be cases over. Any out there? Anything still pending on this matter? Well, nothing. We, we were vindicated in, 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 in court. Um, I think the last thing is just a mention of what the agreement was uh, with the commission. Um, I'm confident because everything came out clearly. And uh, the vote of confidence, as Mutula puts it, by the people is also a vindicating factor. Um, for me, I'm focused on the work. I have, uh, you know, almost a hung assembly in terms of, you know, mm -hmm. Kenya Kwanza and Azimio. I'm reaching out to all the members because the people of Nairobi who voted for that Kenya Kwanza MCA also voted for me. That person who voted for an Azimio MCA and also voted for me wants us to all work together. So I'm reaching out to Nairobians from across the political divide. The politics is over. Let's come work together. All the MCAs, the people who voted for me, those who didn't vote for me, I want to prove them wrong and work for them diligently. I want to wake up every single day and just keep pushing the needle because there are no quick fixes for this city. But that unity is extremely important for us. We're going to get into the nitty gritties in just a bit. But Mutula, what were some of the key issues that, that you faced in your race? Uh, uh, I mean, Makwani, um I didn't face the challenges that uh, I mean Sakaja faced. <laughs> for, <laughs> for I wonder if he called you at any point. Aye, too many times. <laughs> well, I, I don't even want to disclose what we discussed, but you know, I, had, I had a very candid conversation with him. Yeah. And I and I, and I can say as to to and I can say it on TV that I told him most people att will attribute his failure to me and his success to me the same <laughs> way they attribute my failure or success to him. And I told him. And, and, and it was important that the issue is resolved. And I was very concerned, and he knows. And I'm happy that the people of Nairobi is possibly the only one who cuts across. He was voted ac across parties. The issues in Makweni um, are many. There are many. But in terms of priority and order, you, you have so much poverty. Mm. You have hunger like, you have, uh, like we have not had before. So the election, the, the campaign was not even uh, about even manifesto. People were, were asking where are we going to get our next meal. Mm -hmm. 
There is there is so much hunger. They have not seen rain. They are not going to see rain. Uh, and in every place, people stopped me and told me, where where is where is this unga that we were promised? Yeah. The unga that they were promised of a hundred shillings somehow got lost either on Mombasa Road <laughs> or in Dasul area. They never saw it. They have they paid two fifty, and at some point they were unable to even get that that one of two hundred. So you you have you have those social challenges that. Mm -hmm. um, that we are facing when, when we go there. Uh, people don't have school fees, they have to go to school. People have, I, I'm telling you, and I should invite you to a place called Zio. You, I was driving around Zio during the campaigns and mm. you see all these nice, beautiful pixie oranges and, 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 and um, that we have, world-class oranges. When I ask about the market, somebody collects, comes to Makweni, collects them at 45 shillings, bring them to Zucchini in Nairobi and sells them at 330 or 350. My goodness, uh -huh. six times. Six times. Same, same the profit way. for six that Six times journey. the profits, just for a journey of uh, 102 kilometers. Same with French beans, etc., etc. So people are facing those challenges that they are working so hard. They are working so hard because 68 or 70, up to 70 percent of Makweni residents are agriculture dependent, but they are not getting the market. So they told me, we want to work hard, but make sure we get a market for our produce first. Okay, I'm going to cut you there because we're getting deep into county matters, and I'm coming to those. Okay. Let us talk a little bit about what's been happening on the national stage, and I know both of you have been following keenly. Yeah. There are nine petitions before the courts, or you could say eight and a cross petition as well. And I, w I don't want to get into the merits or the demerits of, yeah. of the case, but I just want to get your thoughts on this. How, in your view, might this play out? And I'll start with you, Governor-elect Sakaja. Yes. It's a very close contest at the mm. presidential level, a difference of a little over 200,000 votes or so. Mm. How do you think it will play out for the country? I think, I think first of all, the process um, that we're in currently as a, as a country is really, if, if, if you compare this country to countries across the world, mm. I think it's a great mark of you know, the beauty of our democracy, that even after an election, people have remained calm, there's peace, and I thank my people of Nairobi especially, because this always bec it becomes the epicenter of a lot of the drama. Um, just maintaining peace and allowing the structures within our constitution to play their role. That's a beautiful thing, and we must keep talking about it. And I'm sure even after the verdict is given on the 5th um, of, of, of September, I think that's the date, mm. yeah? yes, that, the, is. that we will still remain calm, accept uh, the outcome, and follow what the court says. Um, from where I sit, you know, I think a masterstroke, really, was just the transparency that um, I believe IBC followed to the letter what the Supreme Court said in 2017. Um, all of those forms were put up there for everyone to see and tabulate for themselves. And I think what the Supreme Court really should do is just to ask uh, if are those forms the same ones which were in the polling stations and then just add them up. So it makes it easy, it was open for everyone. Um, I think this is a matter that will be resolved um, fairly easily, despite the numerous number of petitions. Sometimes you bring many to overload the judges, they only have 14 days to make a decision. Um, but nevertheless, you know, what, what, whatever comes out of it, of course I'm hopeful that uh, the, the win of President Ruto, uh, President-elect Ruto will be um, affirmed. Um, but whichever way it goes, we have one country and we shall remain as one united country. For me, that is a hallmark of it. You can't compare where we are today with where we were in 2007. We have grown as a country. We've matured as a democracy. And people have realized that your neighbor is your brother still. You know, that even if you have different shades of political thought, it was beautiful campaigning in Nairobi. Many times we'd come across uh, the tracks of our opponents mm. and crowds and we'd do high fives and laugh, you know, and joke. Um, I had a cup of coffee with, with, with Poli Kapigade recently. And I'd we, love to hear what your conversation... First, first of all, we just reminisced about how the campaign was. There were stories from his side, stories from my side. Um, I told him he, he had some ideas I really liked, you know, Naitu Naviutaka and some of the things of, you know, like the Nairobi Foundation, ETC. And we, we agreed to work together, you know, going forward. But there's a role he can play with, uh, you know, the private sector in our business council or in our economic and social council. And I think that is the beauty of a mature democracy. I was going to ask whether it's an official or unofficial role. How do um, it, it's up to what we agree. Okay. You know, but, but at least we, we started that conversation. And many people said, look, we'd have loved to have seen now that between William Ruto and uh, Raila Odinga, that His Excellency the President-elect can reach out and, and they also talk after this contest is done. Because ultimately, and I promise you, every Kenyan, no matter how they voted, no matter their political divide, they want the same thing, to go about their lives peacefully, make something out of themselves, and guarantee their children a future. 
That is what those people with the pixie oranges are thinking about. That's what my people in Yamakima and Gikomba and Grogon are thinking about. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, the politics should not deny us from doing that. So for me, I hope that this is expedi uh, you know, expedited, that people can release the pressure through the court process, that the court remains independent and makes a proper decision that there's no interference, despite all the rumors you know, that, that are flying right, left, and center, mm -hmm. and that they just look at the law and follow the law. Mutula, on the back of that, what, what do you think is going on right now? What should they be doing or saying to Kenyans right now? I'm talking about President-elect William Ruto as a mayor candidate, Raila Odinga. If you were in, your, in their shoes, what would you be saying or doing? Uh, can I answer that question last? <laughs> <laughs> I can okay, answer that question last. Yeah, let me give him my opening <laughs> and then I can answer that question last. Uh, let me say that I'm a little disappointed. I'm a little disappointed with the process because I, I sat in the select committee of, I, of uh, both Senate and National Assembly in 2016 that put in place mechanisms of having what we call an integrated election management system, uh, which and the electronic uh, transmission and the scanning of documents. The idea was that you would have uh, verifiable elections, you would have transparent elections, you would not have problems. Uh, and and we, we have done a lot of benchmarking and Sakaja and I sat in the Legal Affairs Committee and I can tell you uh, there is no reason, there is no reason or excuse to keep Kenyans waiting for seven days. It is extremely disappointing, I must say so, and I will say so and repeat. You can't keep Kenyans waiting for seven days. And I'll tell you the reason. One, in, uh, in, uh, uh, I traveled with Senator Orengo on an invitation by the equivalent of the Brazilian Electoral Agency. It manages 107 million voters who are all on biometrics. If you Google the map of Brazil, you'll find it's forests, rivers, islands, and whatever you have. The presidential election is determined within two hours. Two, not even two days, two hours. Two hours, between five o'clock and seven o'clock. My goodness. The system they use is done is created by themselves. Once that system has been put, put in place, and it's a small little gadget that acts both as a ballot box and accounting system, they, they bring, they invite hackers. You know, this is now what we are talking about. Mm. Ethical hackers. Or they invite hackers, all yes. sorts of hackers. Mm -hmm. They tell them, do your bit mm. for Try. three weeks. Yeah. Try. They hack, they do whatever they can, so that by the time they go into the election, the, the, you do not have the problem that somebody is going to get into the system, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm disappointed that there's a possibility that somebody could have hacked into the system, that there is even an allegation that there were hackers, that there was an allegation somebody could remove a form. You know, we, we sound as if we are, we, are, we are not even a third world. What, what sort of a country? Is, that's not what we contemplated. Three, what disappoints me again <laughs> is this. When uh, Dr. Rosalyn Akombe left the commission, she did a very elaborate report, which I have and which I shared in the Committee of Legal Affairs. Mm -hmm. It was an exit report on the workings of IEBC. And he said, if you want to reform this country, you must have an, an IEBC that is not politically affiliated. Mm -hmm. Rosalyn Akombe was slapped in a boardroom in this commission. And she explained why they had problems, because the commission was split between political parties and lineages across political mm -hmm. parties. We sat and looked for a formula of picking commissioners. And we even, at, at some point, this commission were picked by church leaders, because we thought <laughs> <laughs> that if the church leaders pick these commissioners, we might as well good. But I've had a candidate say, Mutula, where will you find angels? People that's, who have that, that's zero what political leanings in this country. That's what I'm wondering. That's, I'm wondering that aloud and saying, now that we have tried all these methods, is it possible for the presidential elections we just bring people who are neutral? That person doesn't have a second name that you know, <laughs> is, it doesn't know Sakaja or is related to Sakaja, et cetera, et cetera, because where are you going to get a person, even, uh, even, uh, the, even uh, people of faith, who doesn't know you, who, who doesn't think that he should give you a favor, who we can trust? Mm. Mm. So that then if you say, my name is Waiga Maura, people are not wondering, okay, you cannot be an Azmio agent. You know, that sort of thinking. So I, I'm saying it's disappointing for this country to have calls about this system, because this system is something that we spend a lot of money. The third one is this. We are the country, uh, the country with the most expensive election. Yeah. That is a fact. 38, I left it at $38 a person. The most expensive election in the world. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it must count for something. 
it must count for something that we have spent so much money per voter to go into an election so that we uh, we employ good technology we employ good systems etc mm. etc now the question of transparency and i can tell you just bother to prosecuting the case i, I don't even I, you of that, I, 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 I don't even know what the case is because <laughs> I'm, I'm not part of it there is a database of every kenyan is biometric with the police in kenya maybe you don't know and i'm telling you so, and the same is with the immigration department. Mm -hmm. So why do we spend so much money trying to buy systems, specifically mm -hmm. for, for IEBC, which, <laughs> which can be manipulated? I, I don't understand. Is it? Therefore, really? what, what am I saying? Yes. I'm simply saying. Briefly, I, I want uh, What I'm simply to saying, mm -hmm. although Kenyans, and you must credit Kenyans because they voted peacefully. You can't say, we thank you for maintaining peace. It's we, the politicians, who cause the problems. Mm. The Kenyans voted peacefully. They went and voted the whole day. And, and, and therefore, it is them who are peaceful. It is politicians who are going to cause disharmony in Kenya. It's not the people. I'll come back to you and, and to respond to the other question that I had for you. Yes. But you've opened up some interesting points. I want to hear Sakaja's yeah. view on, on any thoughts about our electoral management so far. And, and we had you on the day of the, your announcement where you yeah. praised the, the IBC stuff. You said they went through a lot. There, what there what proposals lot of, would you give moving forward? There are a lot of pressure um, in Nairobi. But I don't want to focus on that. Because let's, it, was a, let's, let's this. It, 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 it was a huge fight, you know. I mean, the work of a candidate should not be trying to find returning officers oh. who have disappeared from polling stations, you know. But I mean, having said that, I think we have over-legislated our electoral laws. And it's because of a trust deficit yes. in our country. Yeah. Because of that trust deficit, you'll have the form scanned and sent and then wait for those seven days mm. for those people to come physically with the, with the same form and then uh, you know bring it then you verify without you had knowledge and say no this form is not the same it's the same it's a trust deficit yeah. because with that same exact system that we have yeah. it's possible to do those two hours yeah. because once it's sent i mean those forms are uploaded in how long very quick time they're all up but it, you know just that that trust deficit and then we legislated in a bad mood <laughs> Remember, we were coming from, uh, you know, the 2007 uh, elections, there was a Krigler report, there was, you know, the, the new constitution, and you see that mood of mistrust that, you know, let's put as many, I think maybe India might, might be the only other jurisdiction yeah. with, you know, that number of steps. Right now, I, th I think the election elections. is 50,000 crore or something, yeah. as expensive, you know. Um, and so, in many jurisdictions, in, including, you know, Economies that are much greater than ours. You have mail-in ballots. People, you know, send send you yeah. your ballots. You vote and send it back. You have electronic voting. But in Kenya, we can't do that because we'll say, "Oh, uh, Mutula will hack, or Itumbi, or Sakaja, or you know," because of that trust deficit. That is what we really need to. That penetrability, or or, 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 or the claim that there was, you know, penetration of the system, um, is, is is just because. We don't trust um, each other. For me, some certain things must change. I think county elections are extremely unfair on candidates for governor and senator. That also needs electronic transmission. <laughs> I was looking for, let me tell you, I found some people who have gone to Mushada, and they're supposed to be taking results. I think we need to have a... Uh, what, what do you mean? They, they had... You see, once the election has been done, mm. Before they declare the governor election in the constituency, that same returning officer is running to Bomas yeah. to line up, yeah. yet we have supporters waiting. The tension was building. To line up with their 34A or B? With 34As before they bring my 37A. Ah. So I think we need either a, a presidential election courier, because the presidential returning officer is the, you know, the chairman of the IBC. That's right. And at the constituency level, you don't really have that. You know? So you need to have someone, once the result is done, that specific person then is mandated to take it. So the returning officer then can go to other positions. I think we also need to have electronic transmission for our polls. Look at this. I've just finished sorting out my agents. It's cost me 15 million bob. I had 3,643 agents. For, for how many days of work? Seven? Three okay. days. Three days, 15 million? Three days. The rest, it was now team Zakaja. Because I couldn't afford it. Now, 3,643 polling stations, Mutula, where the form must go. You have 396 uh, polling center managers. You have your mobilizers. For, I'm not a presidential candidate. I don't have that big backing. I think something must be done, you know? So we need to change the issue of transmission. 
we need to keep testing that system and mm. that, I agree with Mutula on that we need to keep testing it do hackathons mm. you know bring these young people they try and penetrate this you know let us see yep. and then over time an election is not a date mm. it's an event so more than a year before or two years you start testing that we know where our ballots are. Not four are. weeks. Mm. Not four weeks. Which is because then that creates, you know, that creates the, yeah. the mistrust. In, but in fact, in fact, the, the legislation we put in place is supposed to have a public testing. Yes. In, in, in what is either 2G, 3G, 4G, so that you can test the system. It's six months to the elections. And it's supposed to be open in public and they're supposed to go around so that we can easily just audit the system. While we do so, Waiga, don't, let's not forget, and, and we must pass our condolences Mm. to the two returning officers, the one of Gishugo and the one of Mbakasi, mm. people who lost their lives while in the tour of duty. Mm. They have lost their lives while working for Kenyans. And therefore, while everybody is saying there is peace, these people have died, must have died possibly because of uh, and this election. And those are the, are the same people in the constitution who are supposed to be the ones who are giving the figures for the presidential election. So, well, for, the, for the second one, the police say, they don't see any foul play in it there. Yeah, well, well, we you, wait for them the, to finish the investigation. Uh, the police is, they can say anything in the world, but I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, one let's is, hear, uh, let's hear the, 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 the point, uh, the, and, and this point must go to the voter apathy. Uh, in Makweni, there's 489 odd thousand voters. Mm. Yeah. 292,000 voted. And it's the lowest I've seen since 2013. Yeah. Why do you think people don't want to vote? We have same a problem. Thing, uh, the same uh, thing I'm talking about. Yeah. You, you, you go and cast your ballot, and your ballot doesn't count for anything. So why, why waste the time? Why spend a thousand shillings traveling to go and vote? And it won't count for something. There will be a dispute, there will be a petition, there will be all sorts of things. There are several polling stations actually in Makweni where they were forced to revert to the manual register. That, that was Kibwezi West. The whole of Kibwezi West, it failed. Do you know how many were registered under the, the manual register tonight? Would you be able to say... Uh, no, that you know this definitively as a as no, a, because the figures are one was a you see, the, the, because of the inter integrated management system. You are able to tell how many people voted, because the manual it was a manual register. You are unable to tell even when we asked them. Some of them in a whole polling station in a place called Ngaka, my, all my results were cancelled. One hundred and seventy three votes were cancelled, <laughs> just like that. Mm. And what is even worse is that there was a court judgment a day. A day before the election. Yeah. I think s some of this process must stop yeah. earlier. Really? So, so who do we blame? Because some would say, I'm sitting here with two outgoing Senate, exiting senators mm. who had the platform, the, the, the opportunity yeah. to legislate and put pressure on national can, government can I, can we to put these systems in place in time. Can we tell you Whom something? Do we blame did, if, I did, if not we, you two in your previous we, roles. We, we did something with this good gentleman here. After the, the fall of BBI, <laughs> Sakaja and yes. I started to become very ingenious. Yeah. And we drafted what would be a non contentious constitutional amendment that would involve mm. some yes. of these reforms. Uh, Sakaja received more phone calls. We were dismissed like. We were uh, dismissed <laughs> ab, ab initio yeah. in total. Because of mistrust. Because of mistrust. Because they wondered why we would draft. Yeah. So they said, oh, this is together. And so together. together. Yeah. Because we were, we were saying, okay, let's remove the contentious clauses and let's yeah. agree on this one. On the basic minimums. On basic minimums, the and then you can do minimum reforms. They, they refused. Mm. When, when we were arguing, and this thing has come full circle, when this uh, integrated management system was introduced in 2017, one of the cabinet secretaries, who is still a cabinet secretary and will remain unnamed for, for in this show, Please, told, to say, unless they're here to defend them. Uh, yeah, yes. Said, you cannot have such a system. Mm. Immediately we passed that system. Jubilee then came and amended the law and introduced something we call complementary mechanism, which is section f very controversial, section 44A. I so, is so colorful. Uh, <laughs> Please, let's, let's behave. Let's behave. <laughs> I no, want to mention your name. You know, that, that <laughs> sort of... Names or dress that, codes that, or whatever that yeah, is. That, yes. that, <laughs> that sort of thinking. So, That's what I like to right? I'm, I'm, I'm simply saying that there is something wrong with us as a country. But you know, the, the and, and I want us to broaden this. I also yeah. want us to talk about our political setup as a country. Yeah. So, for example, we know that immediately after the declaration, or a couple of days after the declaration of President elect William Ruto, uh -huh. UDM left Azimio, joined Kenya Kwanzaa. Uh -huh. We also saw today that uh, outgoing governor of uh, Makweni. And, and the Azimio leading agent. Of McQueen. Was he the agent? He was the chief agent. Well, he's not, he's not here to clarify <laughs> that. What we I, can, today, I can tell you. We've been told is that he's now joining the Kenya Kwanzaa legal team. Yes. What do you make of our political setup when just days after pledging allegiance one way, we are seeing politicians 
some of them going different ways, and, and we hear it more may, ha may happen in the days to come, Sakaja. There, there's something Mutula alluded to when I think he just spoke about the turnout. Huh? It all speaks to the same thing. Um, I'll give you an example. In Rosambu in uh, 2017, when I was going for Senate, first of all, when I went for Senate, I got 840,000. Um, this time, the highest vote was uh, 699. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Of course, I believe it was more, but it's okay, I won. Um, in, in Rosambu in 2017, Nairobi had 1.7 million voters. And I got 98,000. That was the highest vote there. This time, with 2.4 million voters, I got 66,000. Mm -hmm. And that was the highest vote. The turnout going down speaks to th this apathy, talks mm -hmm. about um, a disengagement with the political system. Mm -hmm. Because many people find, especially the young people, mm -hmm. that there's no longer inspiration no. in our political system. There's a lack of trust, there's no inspiration, there's nothing that motivated people to come out. And that is why. You'll see somebody today has to do this party and tomorrow has moved to another party. Because all our parties, honestly, apart from the discussion of, of Hustler versus Trickle Down ETC, are not diametrically opposed in terms of their ideological standpoints. Mm -hmm. And for now, and you know, I, I remember Tony Blair's writings that even in the UK, they have moved from the you know hardline positions of uh, you know conservative versus you know, uh, liberals, etc. It's about efficacy. Mm. But all of us are almost promising the same thing. It's about efficacy. So Kenyans are like, it's okay. If this guy wins or this guy wins, my life then is not going to change. Not, exactly. My vote will not matter. And as young leaders, you know, Mutula and I and many others who have been elected, we need to see why is this great disconnect with our structures of governance. Remember, we have structures of governance designed in the 19th century designed to operate on information technology of the 15th century, which is the printing press, <laughs> to deal with a very rapidly moving population of the 21st century that is on Twitter, uh, is used to instant news, is used to, and you're telling people, come for public participation Tuesday afternoon at City Hall. <laughs> what, so they're not disconnecting. So there's need to reimagine our democracy. That today I will not fault Kivuda Kibwana for moving. Because he's, he's thinking about efficacy. Mm. He's thinking about his political next step. He's thinking about, okay, in his mind possibly he says that this thing is gone, Kenya Kwanzaa has it, I want to be in government. And that's why you'll see people will be scrambling at the door to get in before the ship sets sail. Because they're beginning now to accept that this thing has happened. So it is not that I will not go there because, I mean, today, if there's a vote in Congress in the US mm. on a certain matter, you almost automatically know what the Democrats' position will be versus Republican. the Republicans' mm -hmm. position. Because the parties are defined by ideology. We need to now build those strong political institutions that, you know, if it's social democracy, this is what we believe in. This is what we believe in. When it comes to tax, this is what Azimio would propose, and this is what Kenya Kwanza would propose. Mm. If it comes to, you know, uh, religion or church or, 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 you know, an economic philosophy, and it's something to develop. So that is what has caused this low turnout. And that is what is going to cause a lot of crossing of the floor. And it's not over, I promise you. It is not over. <laughs> Prepare in the next few days to get a lot of breaking news, especially after the 5th of September, when the verdict of the Supreme Court is read out. Just prepare. Is it, to our very strange yeah. bedfellows. Um, <laughs> and yet, we, 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 the Political Parties Act was meant to sanitize our politics. Then, We've done all manner of things. Uh, yeah. Mutula? Let me, uh, yeah, I sat in the same committee with yeah. Jela. On, on, the, on the amendments of the Oh, yes. This was yes. the idea, but... And, and by the way, we disagreed. I disagreed with him yeah. completely. And I said, this is nonsense. What is this? <laughs> And you know, when, when I sat and I said, can we suggest, and I suggested, and I, he can confirm, I suggested that you, you are so, we are so keen on doing pre-election uh, coalitions, uh, coalitions mm. and we are not thinking that people might even want to do post-election engagements. Mm. But since everybody was in a hurry to cobble up mm. all these uh, amorphous uh, coalitions, everybody was in a hurry. I said, why don't we amend this law to provide some element of partnerships where there no, was no loyalty, etc., etc." No, Everybody was in a hurry. Mm. We were in a hurry. Is it, is but I can tell you, or? I can tell you, Waiga Maura, the problems in the country are political and they emanate from political parties. And our laws can only Come, maybe just yeah. give guidance to, uh, to yeah. some level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, so we, are, we, we are the, if we have bad laws, it's because Sakaja and I turn a blind eye to bad laws. And also we over legislate. Yeah, yeah. and then, and, and, and of course, bad manners, the usual yeah. bad manners of the country. But. Uh, uh, more, more importantly, uh, uh, moving forward, is to, is to find 
a better way of doing our politics. When political parties became serious, more women have been elected as governors. Mm. And we like, while, 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 while we were busy amending the constitution and there was quorum, when it became to a question as to whether we should have two-third gender rule, mm. the, the, the legislators just walked out. Mm. They left chamber. We didn't have quorum in both houses. But when political parties finally f uh, started behaving, let me use that word for lack of a better word, you, you have more elected leaders. Look at what Nakuru has done. Irrespective of, of the party. political party affiliation, the fact that Kenyans are now recognizing the other gender. If you go to Machakos, Machakos the, has a the governor, person, senator, yes. men rep, mm -hmm. it's, it's pointing to, 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 to what we are saying, that constantly Kenya has been ruled in the absence of the majority of people who are called women. Uh. We have been excluding them from the decision table. The mm -hmm. men have been sitting to talk about the majority who are outside. The minute we change all those factors, then our politics is going to change. It answers the question you asked me before. The people who win or lose, the people who lost uh, in my election, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are not, uh, we, have, we have not exercised them from Makwene. Mm. They are still Makwene. Are you willing to? And I'm, going to and I'm going to serve them. <laughs> in fact, I'm going to have one of my banquets in one of the candidates' hotels there. Excellent. That, that means, therefore, and I have said this before, and I will not disclose where, that the image of our political leaders will reflect to the supporters. When I sat in a debate, I said, you people quarrel more than we quarrel on the table with the people who we are competing mm. for gubernatorial election. You, election. You, you, you spend so much time on WhatsApp calling me names, mm. and the person you are calling me names on behalf, we have a cup of tea and laugh. Mm. So therefore, the, the answer to your question is yes. Irrespective of the disputes that we all have, win or loss, even the presidential candidates must be seen having a cup of tea. Gentlemen, we, we, I'm told we're due for a break. Before we take oh that break, both of you need to respond to this. If you're in the shoes of President Huru Kenyatta tonight, oh. if you're in the shoes of President-elect William Ruto, if you're in the shoes of Azimio candidate oh. Raila Odinga, oh. what do you say, what do you do? Sakaj. The first thing, if I was in the shoes of President Huru Kenyatta, my, my, my former party boss and my friend, I'll pick up my phone and call the President-elect. What do you tell him? Congratulations. I mean, that, that's the most basic thing to do in a democracy. Mm. That whether or not I supported you, congratulations, and I wish you all the best if your win is, especially if your win is confirmed. We need to depersonalize our political positions. And I think that was a danger of, of an incumbent president taking sides, because mm -hmm. we've not seen it before with President Kibaki, because you put yourself in an awkward position. Well, know? late President Moy mm -hmm. took sides. And, and you saw what happened. <laughs> when he took sides, you saw what happened when he went for the inauguration a preferred candidate. of President Mwai Kibaki. Mm -hmm. If I was uh, Raila Odinga, I would pursue um, justice, as I am doing, but calm my people, you know, and pursue it, uh, that this is part of the electoral process, and also give a call to William Ruto. If I was William Ruto, I would reach out to them in, a, in, in the way I could, mm. because politics is not an enmity. Siasa siyo wadui. And I kept telling the people of Nairobi, yeah, there's a time I went somewhere, and uh, it, you know, it was the last campaign day, and some young guy tried to cause chaos. Mm. I told him, my friend, right on, Borella Odinga will pick my call in a minute. He doesn't even know you. Why are you trying to make noise for him? Mm. That these people are buddies. They have done business together. Their kids even probably have dated. <laughs> and then you want to fight for them. I told them, even there's demonstrations, you won't see Raila's kids, or Ruto's kids, or Musalia's kids, or Uru's kids. And I think or that's, an, or my kids, mine are too young, and they don't even like it. <laughs> <laughs> but you won't, you won't see them doing those things. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so just to remember that there's only one Kenya. Mm. We have no servants quota. There's no annex that we ban this country and we go elsewhere. That's what I would want those three leaders to do, okay. to talk to each other, to even be able to come together Pub maybe publicly, publicly, publicly mm. like I did with Igade, like uh, uh, Mutula says he's going to do with his opponents, and say, look, even this process we're in is not a process to divide Kenyans. Mm. Even the Supreme Court process is not a process of antagonism. It is just the beauty of our democracy, that if you won and I've taken you to court, you win at the court, it even validates your victory more. Mm. You know? And if I feel that I was slighted, I didn't win, instead of taking it out through violence or through incitement, I'm going to release my pressure through the court. 
I think that is what my generation wants to see from the three of them. Yeah. And so we are let down by them. Yeah. And then uh, I'm having the messages now. Go yeah, yeah. If, if, uh, I, let, me, let me disclose something that I did. And uh, I can say so because, I mean, I said it in public. There's a time we had a meeting on BBI and we were in the State House. And I told the president that your biggest legacy is not this BBI or the highways or the good roads. Your biggest legacy for Kenya will be the day you hand over power peacefully. Mm. I still reiterate those statements. Therefore, if I was Uhuru, I would get out of State House and walk around like he was. Let we see him on top of his car. Let him look like he's having a good time. <laughs> 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 like he's not stressed that, you know, that he's unhappy. Mm. He, he should be out there with greeting Kenyans. He's an going president after all. <laughs> we see him uh, around. He goes for Nyamachoma and Kenyatamake, those things. If, if, you think it will, send, it will send a good signal? It all will, is it, well? It will calm down everybody. Mm. And, yeah. and then we will not wonder. Everybody's asking. And what is Uru saying? Because he hasn't said anything. We have not heard him say anything. We have well, he, he told the, 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 we had some visiting senators, yeah, and, uh, well, senators, church leaders as well from the US. Oh, yes, yes. yes, uh, yes. We, we are told he said he will hand over. Yes. Who you are told. Yes. <laughs> I'm saying. And the team that came from the uh, US. Let's, I, you, I would, I, he would do what Raila has done. Very calm, you know. I, every time he's issuing a press conference, I, I bother to look at his face. He's, you can see he's upset, he's angry, but he's very calm. Is Raila? Yes. Mm -hmm. He says, I believe in the process. We're going to the Supreme Court. I have a good case. You remain calm because then uh, the, the, the people who are demonstrating in half an hour, they are back home. Yeah. In half an hour. I think, I think that was a very good thing. You for, understand? For in half an hour, yeah. everybody believed that we, we must follow process. If, if I was Ruto, you, you would remain humble and, uh, you know, everybody must turn down. You know, but you, you must know. commend William Ruto, president elect, because his messaging since he was declared has been one I'm not going to go after anyone. That, uh, you know, no one should fear. In fact, we're in church in Kiambu uh, this Sunday. Gidunguri, in Gidunguri. And if you heard his message, I was, I was actually quite proud of him. Because, you know, you, you campaign in poetry, you govern in prose. The things, the epithets, or the, the, to the language on top of the car has changed. It's completely presidential. Yeah. And he's telling people, look, we have one country. That process will happen. And uh, I think somebody had said in that meeting, I don't know if it was Waititi or someone, that uh, telling Uru Kenyatta, President Uru Kenyatta, that you know, when you go out, you'll be meeting these people who were demolished for houses, etc. And regarding Ashago and William to correct him, said, no, no one will touch the president. The president is, is safe, he's our leader. Those are the kind of messages we want from all of them. In fact, in fact, these messages. And, this, and I think uh, I, I'm, I'm, is long overdue. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> very, I'm, I'm very concerned about these messages at all, you know. We are not going to revenge. We, 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 we will make sure you, you live happily. You know, that's, to me, that's really <laughs> not what should happen. Uh, the, should come, come, the elections, strictly speaking, for purposes of this process, phase one, uh, if we call the Supreme Court phase two, will be the phase one is over, uh, have those cups of tea, engage. People should leave those elections because, you know, this thing is like a wound. You, sometimes when you talk, uh, even about the president. It's like just somebody is looking at a sore wound and just pouring salt quietly. Mm -hmm. And you can see their body languages, you know. We told you we are, we'll beat you, those things, you know. And we can tell wherever he is, he's feeling, he's a human being. But, but, you know, well, it, both it's, sides. It's a, it's a human being. Yeah. And, so, and you can see even the cabinet secretaries who, who are either two who are all over the place, yeah. have gone into hiding. What, what are they well, hiding? Uh, yeah. Come out in public and yes, say... Yes, Makoha is, is busy every day. Uh, he's op he's opening schools and issues. Petty Minard was, is it, was out there today. He's, he's the only also. one. He's I, I don't will, think anyone's... <laughs> will miss him. This feels get like out. a bit of a therapy session. Get out. <laughs> <an> get, <laughs> get out and remain calm. Okay. That's it. Let's take a break Thank on you. that note. At least Sakaja doesn't want a right of reply. <laughs> we come back, we talk a little bit about what they expect uh, in their respective duties now as they uh, oversee, once they are sworn in on Thursday, those two counties, but also their thoughts on what parliament might look like. Still a very crucial house that they have had suitable experience in. And also I'll be looking at your questions. I'm seeing many of them. I'm going to get to them just now, I promise you. 2242 is the SMS line. Hashtag Kenya's Choice 2022. A conversation that we've been looking forward to and they're here and they're not holding anything back. Yeah. We carry on with it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs>